ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಂಚಲನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗಮಿಸತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಎಲ್ಲ ಸುಗಮ ಕಾರ್ಯರಿಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೆ ಡಯಟ್ ತುಮಕೂರು ಮತ್ತೆ ಮಧುಗಿರಿಯ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಆತ್ಮೀಯವಾಗಿ ಸ್ವಾಗತಿಸ್ತೇನೆ ನಿಮ್ಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಗೊತ್ತಿರೋ ಹಾಗೆ ನಾನು ನಾವೀಗಾಗಲೇ ಮೂರನೇ ಹಂತದ ತರಬೇತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೇವೆ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಮಟ್ಟಿಗೆ ಕೆಲವೊಂದು ಸುಧಾರಣೆಗಳನ್ನ ತಂದಿದ್ದೇವೆ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ವಿನೂತನವಾದಂತ ಕೆಲಸಗಳನ್ನ ಇದ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಹಮ್ಮಿಕೊಂಡಿದ್ದೇವೆ ವಿಷಯ ಏನಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಹೇಗೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಮ ತರಗತಿ ಕೋಣೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ವಾತಾವರಣ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಮಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ಬಹಳ ಮುಖ್ಯವಾದ ಅಂಶ ಯಾಕೆಂದ್ರೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಮುಂದಿನ ದಿನಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಬಹಳಷ್ಟು ಸವಾಲುಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಎದುರಿಸಬೇಕಾಗತ್ತೆ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ಒಂದು ಗೊಂದಲ ಕೂಡ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ವಾತಾವರಣ ನಿರ್ಮಾಣ ಮಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಹೇಗೆ ನಾವು ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂದಾಗ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ಬಲವರ್ಧನ ಹೇಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋದು ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ಸಮರ್ಥರಾಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಅವ್ರಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಗೊಂದಲ ಕಳವಳ ಮತ್ತೆ ಗಾಬರಿ ಅಥವಾ ಸಂಕೋಚ ನಾಚಿಕೆ ಇದನ್ನ ನಾವು ತೆಗಿಬೇಕಾಗಿದೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಆ ಸುತ್ತ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಯಾವುದೇ ವಜ್ರದ ಹೊಳಪನ್ನ ಹೇಗೆ ನಾವು ದೂಡು ತೆಗಿತೀವೋ ಹಾಗೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ಒಂದು ಸಂ ಸಂಕೋಚಗಳನ್ನ ತೆಗೆದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಬಹುಶಃ ಉತ್ತಮವಾಗಿ ಆ ತಮ್ಮ ಏನೋ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಾಮರ್ಥ್ಯವನ್ನ ಬೆಳಕಿಗೆ ತರ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಆಗತ್ತೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಈ ಸಂಚಲನದಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾರು ನಾವ್ ಯಾರು ಯಾರಿಗೂ ಪಾಠ ಮಾಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಆದ್ರೆ ಒಂದಷ್ಟು ಅವಕಾಶಗಳನ್ನ ಕಲ್ಪಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ನಾವು ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಕಾಶ ಕಲ್ಪಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಸಂಚಲನ ವೇದಿಕೆಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಿರರ್ಗಳವಾಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡಲಿಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದ್ರು ನಿಸ್ಸಂಕೋಚವಾಗಿ ಮಾತಾಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಾವು ಈ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಪಡ್ತೇವೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಸುಗಮ ಕಾರು ನಮ್ಮ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತರು ನನ್ನ ಅಕ್ಕಪಕ್ಕ ಇರೋರೆಲ್ಲ ನನ್ನ ಸ್ನೇಹಿತರು ನನ್ನ ಬೆಳವಣಿಗೆಗೆ ಅವ್ರ ನನಗೆ ಮಾರ್ಗದರ್ಶಕ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಅನ್ಕೊಂಡು ಮಾತಾಡಕ್ ಶುರು ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅನ್ನೋದೊಂದೇ ನೀವೇನ್ ಎಲ್ ಎಸ್ ಆರ್ ಡಬ್ಲ್ಯೂ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ ನಾವು ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಸಂಚಾರದಲ್ಲಿ ಲಿಸನಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ನ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾಡೋಣ ರೈಟಿಂಗ್ ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳ ಹತ್ರ ಆಮೇಲೆ ಮಾಡಿಸೋಣ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ನನ್ನ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ಇವತ್ತು ಡಯಟ್ ನ ಉಪನ್ಯಾಸಕರಾದ ನಾಗರಾಜು ಸರ್ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅವರು ನಿಮ್ಮನ್ನ ಕುರಿತು ಎರಡು ಆಶೆ ನೋಡಿ ನಾನು ನುಡಿಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಅವ್ರನ್ನ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊತೇನೆ ನಾಗರಾಜು ಸರ್ ನಮಗೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರನ್ನ ಉದ್ದೇಶಿಸಿ ಮತ್ತೆ ನಿಮ್ಮ ಹಳೆಯ ಸಂಚಲನ ಅನುಭವಗಳನ್ನ ಸೇರಿಸಿ ಒಂದೆರಡು ಆಶಯ ನುಡಿಗಳನ್ನ ನುಡಿಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಕೇಳ್ಕೊತೇನೆ ಸರ್ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಪ್ರಸನ್ನ ಸರ್ ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಶುಭೋದಯ ಸಂಚಲನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಹಾಜರಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ಎಲ್ಲ ಮೆಂಟರ್ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಿಂದ ಆಗಮಿಸಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂತ ಎಲ್ಲ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೆ ಹಾಗೂ ಇನ್ನಿತರ ಯಾರೆಲ್ಲ ಜಾಯಿನ್ ಆಗಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಡಯಟ್ ಪರವಾಗಿ ಮತ್ತೊಮ್ಮೆ ಸ್ವಾಗತವನ್ನ ಕೋರ್ತಾ ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದು ಮೂರನೇ ಸಂಚಲನ ಸಭೆ ಆ ಇದು ಡಯಟ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಡಿ ಟಿ ಪಿಯ ಒಂದು ಕನಸಿನ ಕೂಸು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಇದೊಂದು ದೂರದರ್ಶಿತ್ವವನ್ನ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಾವು ಆರಂಭ ಮಾಡಿರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ಬಹುಶಃ ಆ ಬೇರೆಲ್ಲ ಆ ಸಂಚಲನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಹೆಚ್ಚಾಗಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಂಚಲನ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಉತ್ತಮವಾದಂತ ಒಂದು ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಸಿಕ್ಕಿರೋದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಒಳ್ಳೆ ಸ್ಟ್ರೆಂತ್ ಅನ್ನ ನೀಡಿದೆ ಒಂದು ಬಲವನ್ನ ನೀಡಿದೆ ಜೊತೆಗೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಕೂಡ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಇದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ಕಾರಣ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ತಪ್ಪಾಗ್ಲಿಕ್ಕಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಕಳೆದ ಎರಡೂ ಸಭೆಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರ ಒಂದು ಪಾರ್ಟಿಸಿಪೇಷನ್ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ಬಹುಶಃ ಎರಡು ಗಂಟೆ ಮೂರು ಗಂಟೆವರೆಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಸಭೆ ನಡೆದಿರುವಂತ ಉದಾಹರಣೆಗಳಿದಾವೆ ಇದನ್ನೇ ನಾವು ಮೊನ
ಅವರಲ್ಲಿ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ಬಹುದು ಬಹುಶಃ ಇದೇ ಕೆಲಸವನ್ನ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಆದ್ರೆ ನಾವು ನಮ್ಮ ಡಿ ಇ ಟಿ ಪಿ ಯೋಜನೆ ಅಡಿ ಫ್ರೀ ಆಫ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಆ ನಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲಾ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ಇಂತ ಒಂದು ಅವಕಾಶವನ್ನ ಕಲ್ಪಿಸಿದೀವಿ ತಾವು ಈ ಒಂದು ಸಂಚಲನ ಸಭೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚೆಚ್ಚು ಮಾತನಾಡ್ತಾ ಮೊದಲು ನಾವು ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಾಗಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ಭಾಷೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಪ್ರಾವೀಣ್ಯತೆಯನ್ನ ಗಳಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಣ ಆ ನಂತರ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಇದರ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರಯೋಜನವನ್ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ನಾವು ತಲುಪಿಸೋಣ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಬಹುಶಃ ನಾನು ಒಂದ್ ಎರಡ್ ಮೂರ್ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ಭೇಟಿ ಮಾಡಿದಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ನನಗೆ ಆ ಒಂದು ಫಲ ನೀಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದಾರೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ನನಗೆ ಕಾನ್ಫಿಡೆನ್ಸ್ ಬಂತು ಯಾಕಂದ್ರೆ ಮೊನ್ನೆ ತಾನೇ ಒಂದು ತುಮಕೂರಿನ ಒಂದು ಸತ್ಯಮಂಗಲ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಶಾಲೆಗೆ ಎಚ್ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಶಾಲೆಗೆ ಭೇಟಿ ನೀಡಿದೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರು ತುಂಬಾ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಕಲಿಸ್ತಾ ಇದ್ರು ನಾನು ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಸುಮ್ಮನೆ ರ್ಯಾಂಡಮ್ ಆಗಿ ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೂ ಒಂದು ಉದಾಹರಣೆ ಕೊಟ್ಟೆ ನೀವೆಲ್ಲ ಒಂದೊಂದು ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಎತ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಎತ್ಕೊಂಡ್ರು ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ನಾನು ಒಂದು ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಕೊಟ್ಟೆ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ನೀವು ನಿಮ್ಮಲ್ಲಿ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲಿರುವಂತ ವಸ್ತು ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದ್ ಎರಡ್ ಮೂರ್ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸ್ ಮಾತಾಡಿ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದಾಗ ಆ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ನೋಡಿ ನನಗೆ ಶಾಕ್ ಆಯ್ತು ಅಷ್ಟು ಅದ್ಭುತವಾದಂತ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಮಕ್ಕಳು ಇವತ್ತು ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಇದಾರೆ ಅದಕ್ಕೆಲ್ಲ ಕಾರಣ ಬಹುಶಃ ಈ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಂಚಲನ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಒಂದು ಇಂಬನ್ನ ಒದಗಿಸಿದೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಾಗಿ ಮೊದಲು ಮಾತಾಡ್ಬೇಕು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಯಾವುದೇ ಇಂಜರಿಕೆಯನ್ನ ನಾನು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮೆಥಡಾಲಜಿ ಅಲ್ಲ ಅಥವಾ ನಾನು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಟೀಚಿಂಗ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಫೋರ್ಸ್ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀನಿ ಈ ತರ ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಅಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಗಳನ್ನ ಯಾವ್ದೇ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡಿರ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಶಿಕ್ಷಕರಾಗಿ ಕಲೀಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಕಲಿಸ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಎರಡಕ್ಕೂ ನಾವು ಬಂದಿದೀವಿ ಆ ನಿಟ್ಟಿನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಯೋಚನೆ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಮೊದಲು ಸಂಚಲನ ಸಭೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಮಾತಾಡೋಣ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಏನು ಚಟುವಟಿಕೆಗಳಿದಾವೆ ಅದರಲ್ಲಿ ಸಕ್ರಿಯವಾಗಿ ಭಾಗವಹಿಸೋಣ ಆ ನಂತರ ಮಕ್ಕಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದೇ ಆಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಅನ್ನ ಬೆಳೆಸ್ತಾ ಹೋಗೋಣ ಸೊ ಇದರಿಂದ ಸಾಕಷ್ಟು ಶ್ರಮ ಇದೆ ಡಯಟ್ ನ ಒಂದು ಡಯಟ್ ಮತ್ತೆ ಆ ಏನು ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಸಂಚಲನ ಥೀಮ್ ಇದೆ ಅದರ ಒಂದು ಶ್ರಮ ಇದೆ ಆ ಶ್ರಮದ ಒಂದು ಸಾರ್ಥಕ ಸಾರ್ಥಕತೆಯನ್ನ ತುಮಕೂರು ಜಿಲ್ಲೆಯಾದ್ಯಂತ ಎಲ್ಲಾ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲೂ ಕೂಡ ಅದು ಮುಂದಿನ ದಿನಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಗೋಚರಿಸಬೇಕು ಅದು ಮುಂದೊಂದು ದಿವಸ ನಾವು ಆ ಒಂದು ಏನು ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮ ರೆಪ್ಲಿಕಾವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಆ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ ಮೂಲಕ ತೋರಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಬಹುಶಃ ಈ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನ ನಾವು ಹೇಗೆಲ್ಲ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಈಗ ಕಲಿಕಾ ಚೇತರಿಕೆ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಕ್ಕೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಪೂರಕವಾಗಿಯೂ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಅಥವಾ ನಾವು ಪ್ರಾರ್ಥನಾ ಅವಧಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮಕ್ಕಳನ್ನ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾತನಾಡ್ಲಿಕ್ಕೆ ಮೋಟಿವೇಶನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಲೈಬ್ರರಿಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಡಿಕ್ಷನರಿಯನ್ನ ಇದಕ್ಕೆ ಪೂರಕವಾಗಿ ಬಳಸ್ಕೋಬಹುದು ಅಥವಾ ಬೇರೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಶಾಲಾ ಚಟುವಟಿಕೆ ನಡೆಸುವಂತ ಸಂದರ್ಭದಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹವನ್ನ ಕೊಡ್ತಾ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಖಂಡಿತ ನಮ್ಮ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಏನಿದೆ ಅದು ಸಾರ್ಥಕತೆಯನ್ನ ಗಳಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳ್ತಾ ಆ ಏನು ಈಗ ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಏನಾಗ್ತಾ ಇದೆ ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಪೋಷಕರಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಇಂಜರಿಕೆ ಆ ಕಾನ್ವೆಂಟ್ ಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮಾಧ್ಯಮವನ್ನ ಅಥವಾ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಭಾಷೆಯನ್ನ ಉತ್ತಮ ಕಳಿಸ್ತಾರೆ ಸರ್ಕಾರಿ ಶಾಲೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಅದು ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಒಂದು ನೆಗೆಟಿವ್ ಅಟಿಟ್ಯೂಡ್ ಏನ್ ಬಂದಿದೆ ಅದನ್ನ ಹೋಗಿಸ್ಬೇಕು ಅಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಈ ರೀತಿಯಾದಂತ ಒಂದು ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹದಾಯಕ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮಗಳನ್ನ ನಾವು ಆ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾಗ್ತದೆ ಇದನ್ನ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹಕ್ಕೆ ಪ್ರೋತ್ಸಾಹ ಕಾರ್ಯಕ್ರಮವನ್ನ ಪೋಷಕರಿಗೂ ಕೂಡ ತಿಳಿಸ್ಬೇಕಾಗ್ತದೆ ಬಹುಶಃ ನಾವ್ ಮಾಡೋದಷ್ಟೇ ಅಲ್ಲ ಬಹುಶಃ ಎಸ್ ಟಿ ಎಂ ಸಿ ಸಭೆಗಳಲ್ಲಿ ಇದರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ನಾವು ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಪೋಷಕರಿಗೆ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಹೆಚ್ಚು ಹೆಚ್ಚು ತಿಳಿಸ್ತಾ ಹೋದ್ರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ಒಂದು 
ನನ್ನ ಪಾತ್ರ ಏನು ನಾನು ಏನನ್ನ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಬಿಫೋರ್ ಸೀಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ನನ್ನ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಏನನ್ನ ಮಾಡಬಹುದು ಅನ್ನಂಥದನ್ನ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರುವಂಥದ್ದು ಇಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ರೌಂಡ್ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ರೌಂಡ್ ಬುಲೆಟ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಏನೆಲ್ಲ ಕಾಣುತ್ತೋ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಷನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೀಚರ್ ಡೈಲಾಗ್ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ನಾನು ನನ್ನ ತರಗತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಒಂದು ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಆಕ್ಟಿವಿಟಿಯನ್ನ ಮಾಡ್ಬೇಕಾದ್ರೆ ಯಾವ ತರದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಕೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅಥವಾ ಯಾವ ತರದ ಸೆಂಟೆನ್ಸಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಹೇಳ್ಬೋದು ಅನ್ನುವಂಥದ್ದನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಚಿಕ್ಕದಾಗಿ ಚೊಕ್ಕದಾಗಿ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಆ ಇದನ್ನ ಬಳಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ನಮ್ಮ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಅನ್ನು ಇನ್ನೂ ಉತ್ತಮವಾದ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ನಾವು ಇದನ್ನ ನಡ್ಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗ್ಬೋದು ಅನ್ನುವಂಥದ್ರ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಒಂದು ಸಣ್ಣ ಪ್ರಯತ್ನ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ನಮ್ಮ ಕಡೆಯಿಂದ ನಾವ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಆರ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ರೀಕ್ಯಾಪ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಲರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ಯೂಲ್ ಇನ್ ಆರ್ ಪ್ರೀವಿಯಸ್ ಸಂಚಲನ ಸೆಷನ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟೆಲ್ ಮೀ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಟೂಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ ಟು ಟೀಚ್ ಅ ಟಾಪಿಕ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ರೂಮ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಮಿ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ದ ಕ್ವೆಶನ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೀಕಿಂಗ್ ಟೂಲ್ಸ್ ವಿ ನೀಡ್ to teach a topic in the classroom i would request all the teachers to respond to this question by remembering what we have learned in our previous session and you have 1 minute for responding to this for the, those wonderful responses yes you were right we have learned about these three language tools the first being vocabulary set the second being simple questions and the third being simple sentences now let us just recap what we have learned about each of these categories the first one being vocabulary set we know that the vocabulary set is a set of words or phrases that we can use to build or to understand one particular topic or to teach any topic for example if we say noun is the topic then we have different categories under which we have different words named so that we can use those words while teaching the topic noun for example under the category types we have common proper collective noun and so on where we are talking about types of nouns and then comes the category of instruction the words listed under this category is used while we are instructing our learners to perform certain activity with respect to nouns like observe see appropriate identify etc and then we saw the next category as definition where we chose the words like naming words animals people thing which define the concept noun then came the list of examples which is an exhaustive list this is how our vocabulary set looked like then moving forward as a second tool we saw simple questions under simple questions we had two types of sentences that a uh, two types of questions that we saw one was from the kalika chetarke scripts taken directly that is available on teachopia like do you know the month months of the year then came the question framework where we saw a framework for a question which was replace which in which you can replace certain words to frame new questions like which is the first month of the year and you can replace the word first with second third fourth and so on then came the next tool that is simple sentence under which we again saw two types of sentences that is one from the kalika chetarke scripts available on teachopia and the second one being the sentence framework under sentence framework we saw that there was a sentence given in which you can just replace certain words to form a new sentence that is the word lion is a noun because it is the name of an animal you can find it in a zoo or the jungle here the word lion can be replaced with any of the examples of noun like tiger book house etc and then the word animal can be replaced with the type of noun that we have mentioned earlier like place thing or a name then the words like zoo and the jungle can be replaced with any of the examples of places like office park market to form new sentences in this module we are going to look at certain learning outcomes and milestones that will be covered in the month of september and october for grade 4 and 5 we will be dealing with milestone 5 and milestone 6 
for grade 6 and 7, we will be dealing with learning outcomes 6.6 .6 and 7.5. For all of these learning outcomes and milestones mentioned here, the activities given in Kalika Chetarike handbook has been scripted and all the scripts are available on Teachopia for your reference. Thank you, Kriti. So in this model, we will look at a few things. One is uh, we look at three language tools which focuses on vocabulary. So here we'll see simple vocabulary set using vocabulary in question frameworks and sentence frameworks. Uh, then we look at role play and poem where we identify the topic to use three of these language tools. In the speech tip, we are looking at pronouncing and partic uh, participating in pronunciation using poems and tongue twisters. And finally, we will be going with debate. We will show you the steps to facilitate a debate. So like before, uh, like we have learned three language tools, which focuses on vocabulary, which had a vocabulary set, simple questions and simple sentences. This time it's going to be a little different and a little simpler. So we saw that vocabulary set is nothing but a group of words we use under each topic. Now, that was a little complex. Like we've seen before, we had simple concepts like months, where we saw the names of the months like January to December. Then we saw the descriptions, that is first, second, third, which were also the ordinal numbers. Then we went ahead with the language unit, where we saw nouns and the types of nouns and the instructions that we use and the words we use for definition. And then we saw an exhaustive list of examples, which included lion, doctor, village dancer, etc. Then we moved on to a little complex uh, topic that was comprehension strategies where we had inferring as our topic and the words used there were for definition we use words like meaning unfamiliar context with instructions we use words like refer alphabetical and so on and then we saw a few words from the textbook of, of Kalika Chetrike where we saw words like toxic foe and exoskeleton so now the new vocabulary category is rather simple and easy. So what do we do here? Okay, so we look at the topic and then each topic will have a definition, will have certain features and certain examples. Now under the features category, what are the vocabulary related to the basic features or characteristics of that particular topic? Then we know the definition. Definition is simple definition needed to define that particular topic. And then we have examples. Again, this is going to be an exhaustive list of examples. This is vocabulary needed to talk about examples related to that given topic. Okay. So in this webinar, we will look at milestone five, habitats of animals, which is covered in grade four and five. Step three is discuss the habitat of animals. Let's look at the first language tool, that is vocabulary set. Let's familiarize ourselves with the vocabulary set. Now, habitat of animals. What is a habitat of animals? So the definition says, a habitat is a place where an organism makes its home. What are the features of a habitat? Now in this category, we have words like shelter, water, food, space, etc. Similarly, what are the examples of a habitat of animals? So we have words like desert, field, grassland, forest, seashore, ocean. So this is a, is this a very uh, exhaustive list. It can go on. So in case the learners are not aware of what a grassland or a desert or a forest looks like, we can always help them with pictures like these. Moving on to the language tool two, that is simple questions. Let's learn how to ask simple questions. We have seen uh, the scripts in Kalika Chetrike. These are the scripts that are available on Teachopia, which will be helpful for y'all to teach the particular topic. Let us see how few of these questions sound. Where does a lion live? Where do bees live? Which animal lives in the water? Which birds live in trees? Now we have seen how we can replace just a word with another keyword of the same kind. Now let us see how to frame sentences, sorry, questions 
using different categories from the vocabulary script, uh, vocabulary set that we have. Now, can you tell me what a desert looks like? Now, desert uh, is in the category of examples. So you can replace the word desert with any other word from the examples category. So here you can use, can you tell me what a grassland looks like or what a forest looks like and so on. The next question framework is we use words from the features category. Now, what has shelter and food? Now, shelter and food are words from the features category. These words can be replaced with any other words from the same category. For example, what has water and space? Now, the final one is the definition. Do you know what a habitat is? Now, habitat is a word that comes from the definition category. Now, you can replace the word habitat, the word habitat or a phrase from a definition to form a new question. So, it goes like, do you know what an organism is? Do you know what a place where an organism makes its home called? A place where an organism makes its home is a phrase. So we have replaced habitat with the phrase from the definition. Now, this brings us to our first activity. Um, teacher mentors would be conducting this activity. However, uh, all the teachers who are present there need to talk to your teacher mentors. Now, what do you need to do here? So do you know what a habitat is? Now, we want you to make questions using this framework by replacing habitat with any other word from the definition. Where do we find shelter and food? Now here you need to replace one or more word from the features category. And can you tell me what a desert looks like? You need to replace one or, one or more word from the examples category. So we will give you two minutes to answer this question, to talk to your teacher mentors there. And the people who are, uh, who are in their schools, please respond in the chat section. So our next activity is, uh, you have to form a question where you get the answer, a habitat is a place where an organism makes its home. So dear teachers, I would want you to frame a question in such a way that your learners will come up with the answer, a habitat is a place where an organism makes its home. You have two minutes to answer this question. For teacher mentors, please speak to your uh, teachers in your respective centers. Uh, dear teacher mentors, we would request you to conduct this activity in your center where uh, your teachers uh, would respond to you. And the teachers who are attending from the schools, we would request you to send across your uh, response in, uh, in the chat section. And the next is language tool number three, simple sentences. Now, before we have seen how we can replace just another word or another keyword to form different questions. Now, let us see how to frame questions or how to frame sentences using different words from the different categories. Let us look at a few sentences that are available in Teachopia in the Kalika Chetrake scripts. This is how a few sentences would sound like. The lion lives in the forest. A parrot lives in the tree. Fish live in the ocean. So let's look at our sentence framework. Using this sentence, an animal habitat is made up of shelter. Now, shelter is a word from the features category. Now, you can replace the word shelter with any other word from the features category like water, food, or space. The next is desert is an example of an anim animal habitat. So here you replace the word desert from any other word from the examples category. For example, there is woodland, there is tree, there is forest. There is seashore, oceans, etc. 
Now, when it comes to the definition, you make the learners repeat the definition a number of times. Now, this will help the learners to remember what the definition of a particular topic is and they will remember it for a longer time and it is a lot easier. Now we have seen how we make sentence frameworks. Now let us see how to combine sentences, how to combine two categories to form a new sentence. So here we see you can find shelter in a desert. So here we've combined two categories. One is the features category and the other is the examples category. So you can find shelter in a desert. Now shelter and desert can be replaced with any other word, either from the features category or the examples category, like you can find water in an ocean. So just to repeat what I have said before, you can find shelter in a desert, replace the word shelter with words from the features category, like water, food, and space. You and desert from the examples category. Similarly, the desert is a type of a place where an organism makes its home. So here in this sentence, you can replace desert with any other word from the examples category and a place where an organism makes its home. This is from the definition category. You can replace this phrase with another word or a phrase from the definition category. Now this brings us to our next activity for sentence framework. Now I want you teachers to form a sentence where you combine two categories and you make one sentence. So here we have said you can find shelter in a desert. Shelter and desert can be replaced with any other words from the examples and features category. Similarly, the desert is a type of a place where an organism makes its home. These uh, underlined and highlighted words can be repeated or can be recreated when you replace the words from the examples category and words of phrase from the definition category. Now, let us see how we can use what we've learned from the language tools for the learning outcome 6.6, .6, which is on role play and poems. So far, we have seen how we can build a vocabulary set if given a topic. But what do we do if we do not have a topic at hand, which is the case when presented with role plays and poems? It is necessary for us to identify the topic so that we can build a vocabulary set on it, ask simple questions, and then frame simple sentences. Now, let us see how to identify the topic if given a role play or a poem from the Kalika Chetarike handbook. Here are a few steps that could help us identify the topic at hand. First, as the first step, we need to read through the poem or the role play line by line. Second, as the second step, we can underline the important keywords or phrases which are generally repeated or related to each other. In a nutshell, it has to be the important keywords. As a step three, we can ask ourselves the question, what is the main idea in this piece of text? If it is a poem, since it is written by a poet, we can ask ourselves the question, what is the main idea the poet is expressing here? And if it is a role play, and since there are dialogues exchanged between characters, we can ask ourselves the question, what is the main idea the characters are talking about here? The answer to these kind of questions will be your topic. So let us see a small example of a poem from the Kalika Chetarike handbook, which is picked from activity four under learning outcome 6.6. .6. If given this poem, how do we identify the topic for this poem? Let us go step by step. Step one is to read through the poem. Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. 
Mary had a little lamb, its fleece was white as snow. And everywhere that Mary went, Mary went, Mary went, and everywhere that Mary went, the lamb was sure to go. So on and so forth, we read through the entire poem once. Step two, we underline the words that seem important to us, which are mostly key words that are repeated or related with each other. Here in the poem, we see that the words Mary and lamb are quite often repeated, and hence we underline them as the important keywords. Step three, since it's a poem, we ask ourselves the question, what is the main idea that the poet is expressing here or wants to convey to us? Exactly. That is how we come up with our own topic. For example, by taking all of your responses, if we combine and come up with one particular topic, you've all mostly talked about how there is a bond between a little girl and her lamb, which is her pet. And so the topic could might as well be pet animals. And now that we've learned how to uh, identify a topic when given with uh, when presented a poem let's see how to do it when presented with a role play here is a role play that is taken from learning outcome 6.6 .6, activity 1.1 and it is a dialogue between Harshit and Kalyani we request the teacher mentors to conduct this activity at their centers and if possible two volunteer teachers could be asked to play the role of Harshit and Kalyani and read these dialogues aloud for the entire audience and then the three steps could be undertaken. Let me remind you first is to read it out loud for everyone to hear, second identify and underline the important keywords Third, ask yourselves the question, what is the main idea that the two characters are talking about here? And teacher mentors, note that you have two minutes of time for this activity. Yes, as you all said, the answer for the previous activity is library. Yes, we were talking about the conversation that was happening between Harshit and Kalyani was regarding library and books. So now, if we take the library as a topic, let us see uh, how you can come up with a vocabulary set. Just take 30 seconds of time and try to jot down the uh, vocabulary set for the topic library. Great. I think uh, everybody has uh, tried their best to jot down the vocabulary set for the topic library. Now, let us see how the uh, vocabulary set for the topic library looks like. The definition for the topic library looks like this. It's a library is a collection of books or as a room or a building where collection of books are stored here. The words that those are highlighted like library, books, room or a building or collection of books, books that are stored are some of the keywords for the category of definition. And when it comes to features, the features of library are like quiet room, bookshelves, librarian, lots of books, and you can add more words to this category. And as well as when it comes to examples, we can find examples like government library, school library, college library, and you can add any places where you can find library to this list. Now, let us see the second tool that is simple questions. Let's learn to ask some questions. Here, when you are supposed to frame a question for the definition category, what could it be like? It can be like, where can you find a collection of books? You can replace the phrase, a collection of books with any of the phrase or word from the category of definition. And you can frame another question. The question can be like, where can you find a library? 
or where can you find a room filled with books and many more if you are supposed to frame a question using the features category it can look something like this what is a place with bookshelves and a librarian called here the words bookshelves and librarian belongs to the category of features you can replace these words with one or more word from the same category that is from features and you can frame a question like what is a place with lots of books called or what is a place with a librarian called as or what is a place with quiet room and lots of books called when it comes to the category of examples you can frame a question like can you tell me what a school library looks like here the word school library can be replaced can be replaced with any of the words from the example category like college library or government library and you can frame a question like can you tell me what a college library looks like this brings us to the next activity and i would request the teacher mentors to conduct this activity at their center teacher mentors just a reminder this is a pair work activity and we would request you to take over and here we would request the teachers to come up with the questions of different category of vocabulary set like definition features or examples the question for definition can be like where can you find a collection of books and you can replace the phrase a collection of books with any of the word or a correct part of the definition and then uh, the next question regarding features can be like what is a place with bookshelves and a librarian called you can replace the words bookshelves and librarian with any of the words from the features category and uh, for the example category you can frame a question like can you tell me what a school library looks like and you can replace the word school library with any of the words from the example category and to conduct this activity we have 2 minutes of time and for the teachers who are attending from their schools we would request you to send a cross your questions in the chat box here again this is a pair work activity where i would request the teacher mentors to conduct this activity at their centers we want uh, the teachers to come up with one or more questions based on the features the different features of a library are a librarian quiet room lots of books bookshelves etc we want the teachers to come up with one or more questions based on these features teachers do just make a note that if your learners are supposed to come up with the answer that the different features of a library are a librarian quiet room lots of books bookshelves then what question would you ask to your learners the answer as the different features of a library are a librarian quiet room lots of books then we can ask a question like what are the different features of a library or what are the features of a library now let us move on to the next language tool the next language tool is simple sentences here are some of the sentences or some of the dialogues that we can say during conducting an activity for a role play and this dialogues are available in the kalika chetarike scripts on teachopia this is how those dialogues would sound like read out the dialogues individually first and then practice it with your partner this kind of voice modulation is generally used to help the listener or a third person understand the context of the story teachers remember that these are some of the dialogues that you could use in the classroom to instruct your students or learners Now let us see how to frame sentences using the different categories of the vocabulary set for the topic library. Here is a sentence framework that we can use to create more sentences using the category of features. And the sentence is: A library is made up of 
bookshelves and a quiet room here the words bookshelves and the phrase a quiet room is a uh, belong uh, the words belong to features category and you can replace these words with any of the words from the same category like librarian or lots of books and come up with any number of sentences like a library is made up of bookshelves and a librarian or a library is made up of librarian and lots of books a library is made up of a quiet room with lots of books you can come up with any number of sentences like this when we are supposed to create a sentence using the example category the sentence would be like a government library is an example of a library here the word government library can be replaced with the words from the example category like school library or college library when it comes to definition the sentence framework that we can use or the sentence that we can use will belong to the definition category and the sentence is a library is a collection of books or is a room or a building where collection of books are stored here just make a note teacher that when it comes to definition category while forming sentences we would just repeat the definition for enough number of times to help our learners understand the topic and to know what the topic means so the definition would help the learners to know what the topic is or what the topic means so we would repeat the definition for n number of times to help the learners understand the topic when it comes to com combining categories you can form sentences using different categories like you can find lots of books in the school library here the lots of the word the phrase the lots of books belongs to the category of features and school library belongs to the category of examples you can replace these words from the categories of features and examples and form the new sentences the same way you can create more sentences using the category of example and definition like the government library is an example of a room or a building where collection of books are stored here the the word government library belongs to the example category and a room or a building where a collection of books are stored belongs to the definition you can replace this with a word or a phrase from the definition category and the words from example category to form new sentences here is another activity and we would request the teacher mentors to conduct this activity teacher mentors do note this is a pair activity and we would request the teachers to come up with sentences using different categories you can form sentences using the framework given here and teacher mentors please note the time given to conduct this activity would be 2 minutes let us see how we can come up with our own vocabulary set to come up with any vocabulary set for any given topic for you can follow three steps the first step is to use google to find the definition features and examples for the topic that you have chosen and step 2 is to see if you can add similar words from the textbook or workbook in each of the category and as a step 3 all that we need to do is use simple sentences and simple questions frameworks that we have discussed all this while and frame our own sentences and own questions about the topic and we would request all the teacher mentors to help the teachers to form their own vocabulary set for any topic that they would choose after this webinar is over now let's see how to pronounce a uh, certain tongue twisters and poem when presented with tongue twisters we need to remember that the trick behind the tongue twisters is 
that they are sentences that have similar sounding words and the confusion might arise from the fact that these sounds might get exchanged. Now, I'd request all of you to repeat some of these tongue twisters after me. She sells seashells on the seashore. She sells seashells on the seashore. A proper copper coffee pot. A, a proper copper coffee pot. Red leather, yellow leather. Red leather, yellow leather. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. Ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. I saw a kitten eating chicken in the kitchen. I saw a kitten eating chicken in the kitchen. Wonderful. Thank you for that. Let us also remember that the faster these sentences are said, the more chances we have of confusing the sounds. This is a good speaking exercise that we can also uh, exercise for ourselves and give our language learners to be able to improve their pronunciation. Now here is a poem and let us see how we can recite a poem. But before we do that, let us remember that the Word P-O-E-M is pronounced as a poem. Here's a poem on the fly that is taken from the Kalika Chetarike handbook. Here's how it could be recited. There's a fly inside my bedroom. It's driving me insane. It's buzzing around my wardrobe. It's on the window pane. It's flying around the lampshade. It's coming very close. It's landing on my pillow. It's walking on my nose. It's looking in my eyeball. Phew, it's flying off again. It's walking on the ceiling. It's driving me insane. So on and so forth, a poem could be recited. It is important for us to remember that wherever we see a comma, a Half pause is to be given to the sentence. When we see a semicolon, a longer pause is to be given. And if there is a full stop or a couple of full stop, a complete pause has to be given. And if we have exclamation marks, we need to convey the expression or the emotion through our voice. And if there is a question mark that is given, we need to convey that it is a question right through our voice modulation. Let us see how that could be done with just a few words. I'd request you all to repeat few keywords with the required expressions uh, that would be needed while re reciting a poem. Let's begin. Insane. Insane. Buzzing. Buzzing on the window pane. On the window pane. Round. Round. Lampshade. Lampshade. Very close. Very close. Landing. Landing. Pillow. Pillow. Walking. Walking. Nose. Nose. Looking. Looking. Eyeball. Eyeball. Phew. Phew. Again. Again. Ceiling. Ceiling. Driving. Driving. Buzzing. Buzzing. Again. Again. Never. 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 It's such a pain. It's, it's such, such a pain. Bedpost. Bedpost. On the floor. On the floor. Yes. Yes. Door. Door. Buzzed off. Buzzed off. off. Now. Now. But wait. But, but wait. wait. Buzzing. Buzzing. Surprise, surprise. Surprise, surprise. 
Here is how emotions need to be conveyed while reciting a poem. Moving on to the next learning outcome, which is 7.5, we'll be dealing with a debate uh, portion of the learning outcome um, in this module. But in order to conduct a debate in the class, it is important for us to know how to facilitate a debate. As a teacher or a facilitator, here are two simple steps that can be undertaken in order to prepare well as a facilitator. The first step being that you need to choose an appropriate topic. The choice of topic must be grade appropriate and must be within the scope of the learner's familiarity. Why do we have these two as our pointers under choice of topic? It is simply because the learners need to understand the topic at hand. If they do not know about the topic, they would not be able to prepare a, a debate on the topic and hence the debate would not be successful. And so the teachers or the facilitators can pick topics that are from the textbook, not necessarily only from the English textbook, but in order to create an English environment, you could pick topics from the science or the social science or any other subject domain textbooks. And if at all you wish to choose topics outside the textbook, keep in mind the grade and age of the learners and how much they are exposed and experienced with that topic, be it at home, school, or amongst friends. The second step is for you to prepare the pros and cons on the topic for yourself. What do we mean when we say pros and cons? We mean that you need to prepare advantages and disadvantages for the topic and jot down a minimum of five points each for yourself. Yes, it is for the learners to come up with these points and discuss during the debate. But even before the debate is conducted, it is important that the facilitator has a complete idea of the debate and the topic for himself or for herself. And hence, this preparation step is very, very important. Now, when we hand out a particular topic to the learners, they would need some hand-holding or help as to how to prepare on the topic. Here is where our language tools come to our rescue. If presented with a topic like zoo as a home for animals, the vocabulary set could be used to prepare for this topic. As simple as, divide the class into two groups, give advantages for one group and assign disadvantages for the other group and explain the three categories of the vocabulary set to each of the group, namely definition, features and examples. As and when the learners fill these three categories, they would be able to come up with good points for the advantages and disadvantages. The only difference between the two is that advantages, definition, features, and examples must all be positive towards the topic. And when it comes to disadvantages, definition, features, and examples must all be negative. Here, if we're talking about zoo as a home for animals, we need to talk about how it is good to have a zoo under advantages and how it is not very nice to have animals in a zoo under the disadvantages column. For example, under the definition category, we could have words like how it is an enclosed and safe space for animals. It could be um, controlled and monitored by Animal Welfare Department. And uh, for the disadvantages definition column, we could say of how it is artificial and how it is an alteration for nat nature and how that is not very nice so on and so forth, we could fill the features and examples category as well. Let us remember that if you give features for each of these uh, columns, you can give examples for those features. If 
our feature for a zoo is human interaction and interference. You could give examples of how humans interact with animals. They feed them, they give them medical attention, and thus you have examples as well. And giving it a little positive uh, note would put it under advantages column, and giving it a little negative note would put it under the disadvantages column. This is how the vocabulary set can be used to prepare for the debate as the first step. And then before they go on to prepare for the debate, you could simply tell the two teams that these are few simple questions that they need to keep in mind while preparing for the advantages and disadvantages of for and against. As simple as what are its uses? How is it beneficial? What problems does it solve are all positive advantages or four points. And questions like, how is it not helpful? What problems is it creating? How is it impacting something in someone, but not in a good way? All of these points can be given under the against uh, column and the team could come up with points. And when these simple questions are given, the answers or simple sentences to these questions could give us an ideal debate output. Here are five ideal points under advantages and disadvantages, which have come up by first building a good vocabulary set and then coming up with simple questions and then giving simple sentences to those questions. Um, under advantages for the topic, the learners might as well come up with points like how endangered species can be monitored and taken care of by animal experts and how animals can be protected from calamities. And under disadvantages column, they could uh, come up with points like how animal behavior is altered by human intervention and how caging animals for entertainment and research is not ethical. This is how an ideal debate can be prepared for from both the sides, both from the facilitator's point of view and from the participant's point of view. And these are a few steps or language tools that can be used while conducting and preparing for a debate. This brings us to the closure of this module. Prasanna sir, over to you. Thank you, sir.